I spent a decade working with vinyl plotters and CNC machines in the sign industry, and I'm going to give you my honest opinion of this $400 vinyl plotter from Vivor. Vivor is a company you've probably already heard of. I've seen these diesel heaters floating around various social media platforms, and I even considered putting one in the tiny home that I built in 2021. When I did a little more digging on this company, I found that they make literally everything from pottery wheels to automotive tools, but one thing really piqued my interest, this vinyl cutter. At a cost comparable to Cree Cut's flagship vinyl cutter, I knew I had to put it to the test. It's both similar in size and capability to some of the multi-thousand dollar machines I've used in the past, but it's missing some features. We'll touch on that later. For now, let's get it together and go over the specs. The plotter ships with a stand that needs to be assembled and this is relatively straightforward. It's fully aluminum and has wheels to roll it around, and it also has rollers on the back to use up to 32 inch rolls of vinyl. The plotter simply sits on top of this stand with cutouts for the rubber feet to go through. It's pretty sturdy and it brings the machine up to a comfortable working height while standing. Most industrial plotters will have a pocket or a sweep up front here to catch long running vinyl cuts and keep them off the floor so they don't get dust or dirt on them. But it's not a must have and something like that could definitely be added in the future if you find this a problem. Plotters like these have three axes. The X which is belt driven from left to right. The Y is achieved by these pinch rollers and a knurled rod that feeds the vinyl forward and back and the Z is usually a solenoid in the cutter head that can apply pressure at a specific force, plunging the knife into the vinyl. The unit has an end stop button for the X axis to zero it in on the right hand side of the machine. Okay, here's the biggest difference between this plotter and one you'd pay thousands for. Commercial machines will have an optical sensor embedded near the cutter head under where the vinyl will be. And this detects the end of that piece of vinyl, letting the machine know exactly where it ends. This means that your X and Y will be auto-homed to your workpiece. Some even detect the position of the pinch rollers to detect material width. That data is then auto-applied to your cut software workpiece. And this is one of those nice to have features that is totally unnecessary. And as long as you enter your material width manually in your cut software and set your Y origin manually on the machine, you're good to go. There's a panel up top with a few controls and an LCD to display things like knife pressure in grams and feed rate. The translation here is a little weird, but if you press leave, you'll enter a move or jog mode. From here, you can position the vinyl and cutter head. You can also set an X and Y zero or origin point. You can adjust pressure and speed and even trigger small test cuts, which is handy as you'll need to double check settings for different vinyl. The cutter blade itself is a small knife that fits in a housing. You can adjust the length of the blade using these nuts here. To remove the blade, simply press this spring loaded rod on top and enough of the blade shank is exposed to safely remove it. I'm pretty sure these blades are standardized and can accept blades from companies like Roland, so sourcing blades should be relatively easy for this machine. The blade then gets secured into the head assembly with one nut. There's two types of vinyl plotters, tangential and drag knife. This one falls into the drag knife category, meaning the tip of the blade is slightly offset and will always cut against the direction the machine is moving, relying on the blade's ability to freely spin in the housing to ensure it's oriented correctly. A tangential cutter uses a stepper in the cutting head to lift and reposition the knife after each cut and also to follow curves. That adds a lot of complexity to a machine and at this price point isn't something I'd expect to see. Also included is a pen tool head that can be used in place of a blade. This may seem like a bit of a gimmick, but I've used it in the past to make tons of patterns for mounting things to walls, and it's nice to see they've included it here. I'm gonna throw the pen in here just to do some initial testing so I don't have to waste too much vinyl. During the test, I noticed there was a fair amount of overcutting where the machine started the cut early to make sure the drag knife is oriented the correct way before it enters the cut. 
And of course, I have to test my logo out here. After a few tweaks to the pressure setting, I was pretty impressed with the results, and I was able to write my logo at a pretty small scale. Okay, on to vinyl. I just moved to a new small town, and I'm not entirely sure where to source large rolls of vinyl just yet, so I ended up just grabbing some of the Cree-cut vinyl from Walmart. These are marked up quite a bit, and each 12 inch by 3 foot roll was 10 bucks. After running a few test cuts, I'd figured I'd cut a batch of Wild Rose Build stickers. The included Signmaster cut software is pretty bare bones, but it has everything you need to get the job done. These cut great and weeding them was pretty easy. Occasionally I'd have a part where the drag knife didn't quite close a vector, but you just sort of hold the piece you want and tear the vinyl away from it. This is pretty common on a drag knife machine, and while it hinders the speed at which you can weed the vinyl, there's a number of solutions to fix this, including adjustments to the aforementioned overcutting setting. Next, I cut some stickers for my Bamboo Labs P1P. And finally, a window deco for my small shop door. Okay, let's talk about the features this machine doesn't have that I haven't mentioned yet. To my knowledge, you can't use a tool called flex cut on this machine, which basically cuts through the vinyl and perforates the backing of the vinyl so each individual decal has an offset contour piece of backing. And finally, there's no print and cut function. This is used when you print using another machine onto vinyl and then use the plotter to cut the printed stickers out. This requires an optical sensor in the cutter head to read printed registration marks on your media to adjust your vector cut file so everything lines up. There's ways to manually do this, but it can be a little finicky. If none of that sounds like stuff you'd absolutely need, then this plotter could be a budget-friendly entry tool into the sign making or decal industry. There's a little bit of manual adjusting to do for each cut, but you could absolutely run a deco business with this thing and pay it off within a job or two. I'm super happy to have this in my arsenal now and have a bunch of projects planned for it. Huge thanks to Vivor for sending this unit for a review. If you've been bitten by the vinyl bug, there's an affiliate link in the video description that costs you nothing and kicks back a small amount to the channel. If you like this sort of niche sign making content, leave a comment and let me know what you'd like to see next. As always, thanks for watching and happy making.